Hello everyone. I'm Deborah from Deborah Adele's Craft Room. Tonight we're going to be painting a scarecrow head with a felt brim for a hat. I hope you enjoy the video. These are the products that I'll be using for this project. They are Americana Acrylic Paints by Deco Art. The colors are Light Buttermilk, Cashmere Beige, Red Iron Oxide, Milk Chocolate, Golden Straw, Antique Gold, Spicy Mustard, Light Cinnamon, Olive Green, and Avocado. I'll be using Dura Clear Satin Varnish to finish the scarecrow when it's completely dry. I marked the, the head of this scarecrow <clears throat> with the hat brim on and I painted I painted it brown. Milk chocolate this part that seemed to be the best match. You'll have to use your own paints and your own felt to decide what color. Or you can even buy a hat if you want, a, a straw hat. Okay, so I have this all set. I'm going to set it aside till the end. I, oh, let me see, show you how that went down a little bit in the back. Okay, The uh, face, I drew two eyes on, ovals, triangle nose, just a little bit of a mouth, and I painted around those features with cashmere beige is the color. I didn't want to use toffee for two reasons. One is I'm running very short of toffee, and until I get my order in, I don't want to use it up. And I don't, I didn't really want it to look like a person. I wanted it to look more like a scarecrow. So I thought this color, this color might work. So far, so good, I think. So now our next step is to paint the eyes black. You can still see the lines, even though I went over the lines. You can still see the lines well enough to paint it without drawing the lines back in. Okay. I filled in the eyes with black. <clears throat> now I'm going to decide which direction I want the scarecrow to look. Off to the side or up or down, straight ahead. But while I'm doing, while I'm thinking that over, I am going to paint the nose. I'm going to paint the nose with red iron oxide use my number three round brush to get into the corners and the points There's not really much to painting a scarecrow. A little shading, the eyes, of course, the mouth, a line work for the stitches. You can use a small flat brush for this too. 
get number two flat. To make this a little wider. So it's the same distance from the eye on each side. Let's see what we got here. Okay. I'm going to paint the mouth the same color as the hat. The, uh, Milk chocolate. Make this piece here about the same width as the bottom of the nose. There's no rules, but I think it looks better if it's not too wide. This is about a quarter of an inch wide. Maybe an inch and a half long. But of course that could change with the size of your gourd. Now, before I forget, I'm going to put the blush on the cheeks of the scarecrow. I'm going to use that coppery color and a scruffy old brush. Make sure you get some on the brush. Sometimes it gets kind of shiny, the stuff, and it won't. It won't get on your brush. one cheek. I love this little brush for puffing off. It's so soft. Okay, now I'm going to second coat the nose. And I'm going to second coat the mouth. have the eyes looking off to the side. So I'm going to draw the lines. Hopefully I can stay in the lines while I'm painting so we don't have, we don't have to do too much touching up. I'm going to 
look off to the left, that is the pupil. Okay, I had to do a little scritch scratch in there. I made the pupil smaller, came around like this. I'm going to put the white in here, a little sliver of white, and now I'm going to do it again on the other side. I don't know why I don't use the templates like I show people. It would just be so much easier, but I just forget. Okay. Okay, I think that's it. Now I'm deciding what color the eyes should be. If I should do them blue or, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to do olive green. I'm going to go into the pupils and paint over the graphite marks. Okay, now I'm going to paint the white part of the eye, but of course I'm going to leave that little edge so that it doesn't need to be lined. there makes it look like it's been lined. I think this scarecrow is going to be scared of crows. That's why it's looking like this. Okay, I have the whites done. I put three coats on. It's very messy. I'm going to be touching it up after I put the green in. I'm using olive green for the eyes. Okay, I have quite a bit of touching up to do here, so I'll do that <clears throat> and come back and we'll do the next step. Okay, I painted the eyes and I touched them up. There might be a couple of spots that need further touching. I'll see that as I go. But right now I'm going to put the eyebrows on and the eyelashes. And I'm going to use black. Now the eyelashes. Again, I'm going to do this side here. Put a little few little eyelashes down here, the very bottom of the eye. Gives it kind of a raggy doll look. Okay.
Okay. Now we have to line the nose. I'm going to use black. A straight line so I don't have those curves to go around. Yay. I'm going to line that mouth, that little mouthpiece. Okay, now we're going to do some shading. I think we're going to use mm, avocado to shade the eyes. We have the avocado here. And we're going to shade the outside edges. Shaded. Now I'm going to shade the uh, inside around the pupils. Okay, the eyes are shaded. They look better in person than on the screen right now, but maybe it's my new glasses. I'm going to put the highlights in the eyes. Okay. Now I'm going to shade the nose with black. going to also shade the mouth while I'm waiting for that to dry. draw the stitches in. There's stitches. I'm not going to draw just a solid line because I don't want to have to touch up all those all those lines. Okay, that's that. Real good. Okay, I'm going to do the other side of the nose. Okay. 
and I'm going to do the top of the mouth. I'm going to do the bottom of the nose. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to paint stitches because we have to sew on his nose. So we're going to paint stitches around his nose. I'm going to try to make them equally spaced. So I'm going to put one on each side of this stitch that's going from his nose down because I don't want you know, that stitch to be in line with the other stitch. Okay, now make one more and one more. One more here and one more here. Cody, so you got stitches all across. Now, I'm going to Make one on the top on each side. Like that. Then we're going to put one on the bottom on each side. Close to the bottom. See those? Okay. Now we're going to find a center point between those two. Okay on both sides. And then we're going to put two in between a two in between each one. getting there. Okay. The stitches are on. Now we have to paint the other stitches. The ones that go down the center. We're going to use a different color for that. Okay. I got honey brown. And I'm going to paint these stitches over the top of the lines that I made. I'm not making the paint thin. I'm leaving it thick so you can see these. Okay, those are the stitches down the face. Now I'm going to make a smile 
face, the smi smile stitches. And again, I'm going to just draw stitches. I don't want to have to touch up in between the stitches. So started at the middle of the side, and we're going to curl them up. See how that looks? Okay, now I'm going to do the other side. Oh, careful. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to put these in now. Same color, honey brown. There we go. It's hard to see over the uh, the uh, blush, but I'll put another coat on and it'll sol make the paint more solid. Okay. Putting the smile lines, not big ones though. I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight here, down the side a little. There we go. Yeah, that looks okay. And I'm going to put another highlight just at the top of the mouth. If you don't like those highlights, you can take them off, paint over. I have some paper tape that I'm going to use to tape off the hat while we do the, I hope it's not too sticky, it seems alright. Because we have to do the hair and trying to stop it, stop the hair just short of the hat is kind of difficult. So I'm going to just put this on best I can. I'm going to turn it a little as I go. Now, the, the brim will cover a lot of this, but this will prevent you from going wild with the hair. Okay. Let me see. Got over here now. Okay. You see how I did that? Even if it pulls the the brown off, it's a lot easier than trying to stop every time you get up to the hat. sure what color we're going to use for the 
hair yet. We have three choices here. I have spicy mustard, pretty yellow, golden straw, blonde, it's a blonde, and then there's this antique gold. the antique gold is a little darker than the uh, other colors and it'll show up show up well I think I have here a number five round I don't want to really put a lot of paint for the hair a lot so it's thick and has a lot of texture so that's why we're using the big brush. I'm going to start at the bangs. This is antique gold. I don't know if I said that. Okay, now I'm putting the paint down and drawing it up. Going up onto the onto the uh, paint or the tape. Another one. Just keep doing it. Don't go over the eyebrows, just go around like he had a perfect haircut. Okay. okay. See that big glob I put on there? If you can see through the paint up above, because it does spread out quite a bit up there, what we can do later is just run another layer of this to either make it solid or to put some more of these little bubble marks on. When you get halfway around, then take a look at what you've done so that you can um, do the same thing going up the other side. Now it's coming out pretty good, I think. I'm not going to go any farther than I am now in the back. You see how it is? I don't want it to curl around underneath the gourd, so I'm just going to have that be the longest that it is. Like a Raggedy Ann doll.
I'm putting some more globs of paint here and there to give the top of the hair more texture. I'm just going to keep doing this until I like it. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, let me try over here, put a little bit up here. The scarecrow is getting like a shag haircut. Okay, now, so what it looks like all the way around. You can always add more to it later. If after it dries, you don't like it, you just add more and put it on thick so that it leaves it ridges. Okay, let's see now. I'm going to pull this off. I might be sorry I pull it off so soon, but I want you to see it. Not sorry. Not sorry yet. Ah, beautiful. Not sorry. Okay, look at that. Worked out pretty good. And any little tiny bits of paint that got under the tape will be covered with the, the brim of that hat. So, I'm going to leave this to dry. I think I'm going to leave it overnight. Because it's late and I have a headache. So, I'm going to touch up a couple little spots that happened. Oh, and I have a mistake on that eyebrow. I have to fix that, too. I'll fix it tonight before I go. Okay, there he is. So far, so good. I think all he needs is his uh, hat brim. And we'll do that tomorrow when all that paint is dry going to take a good long time for those hair strokes to dry enough. Yeah. Pretty cute. Okay, since I was last on, I had to I had to do something to the hair. The antique gold just blended right in. And you really couldn't see it. So I put some spicy mustard over the top of it, just flicks of it here and there. And that looked kind of faded out too. So I put some light cinnamon color through the hair, just little streaks. And then I put some spicy mustard over the top of that here and there. And I'm okay with it. It's not the greatest, but I'm okay with it. So now I'm going to be making the hat band. And I don't want it to stick straight up. I want it to lay down. So I'm going to cut it. Different than straight, you know, straight across. I'm going to, I'm going to get a different pad. Okay, I have a marker, and I'm going to kind of peek so I can see where the, the uh, line is. And I'm 
going to go around with this and make a happy end this way. Under it a little. Okay. Okay. I got it up onto the headband area, but I'm going to flip it over after I cut it so it doesn't uh, doesn't look bad. Okay. Now I'm going to go around, cut as much red off as I can. I'm just going to go around and try to make it the same width all the way around. Okay, let's see how this works out. Okay, put it like this. Okay, looks like it'll be okay. It does need a little bit of touching up here and there. The little points that stick out too far. I hope this works because you know not everything works. There we go. Now we have a hot glue gun here. I'm going to make this a little bit narrower, I think. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's got to be more near. That's got to be more narrow. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hot glue the brim on. I'm going to find a good spot for it because it's a little bit oval. And I'm just going to go across like this. Ouch, that's hot. Okay. Put it over. And hopefully it'll be good. stuck it's stuck okay now little by little I'm going to put the rest of it up the glue will get cold too fast if I do it all, I think anyway. So I'll try this now. I don't really like this bend in here. Maybe I can get it out somehow. I 
I guess it's okay because you know scarecrows have raggedy hats in this little bend here. I don't know. It's okay for now. I just want to show you how to do it and then you can just make sure that your hat doesn't do that. Or we just bend the whole thing up and have it look like a rag hat. Okay, now This uh, thing isn't, oh, maybe, maybe I can make it go up a little, oh, not long enough. If you could just see my trials and tribulations, you might never want to paint a gourd. Okay. I'm going to... Put this on, like it or not. Patching this piece up in the back, filling it in because it just didn't work out. So I put it on there and I drew around so that the lines would meet up. We'll see if this works. Okay. okay. Try really hard not to burn yourself. to cut off here. Okay, there he is. Cracked hat and all. There's our scarecrow, all finished. Patched hat, streaked frosted hair. And there you have it. I'll be polyurethaning this shine it up a little bit. I think it'll be cute, but I don't know. 
Let me see. Let me see if I can do something here like that. Nope. Not over. Okay. Maybe what you should do is when you sew these two pieces together to keep it from cracking, you should sew a stiff piece of felt with a, a soft piece of felt over the top. And I think that would work. So there you go. Because I can't stand that little crack in the hat, I made something here to cover it up. It's a little jack-o'-lantern. I cut out some stiff felt, stuck it on here. This is not stiff, this is soft. And I'm going to uh, glue it in place. And I'm going to use the hot glue because I don't want it to fall off. So I'm just going to put a few little places because I also don't want it to stick down everywhere. Okay. okay I'm going to put it right on this crack. Just like that. And I'm going to put a stem on it as well. Okay. Stick this under. Let me see how that looks. Mm, looks alright. Okay, this hat band just wasn't working out for me with that crack in it. So I cut out a pumpkin out of some orange felt and I got some stiff black felt and put the face on. I hot glued it down and I put a little stem on it and stuck it right on that crack. So there he is. There's our, there's our scarecrow. I'm going to turn them around. That's some, it looks like straw, it looks stiff. So that's good. There's that patch I made. If you had a little, you know, silk chrysanthemum or something, you could stick that right there instead of that, instead of this pumpkin. But this is it. This hat brim put me right into a hot flash, <laughs> but I'll survive it. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel, click on the bell, so that you get notifications of future videos. Use a soft felt here on top of the stiff felt so that you don't get these cracks. Or crack the whole thing 
and it'll look like it's supposed to be cracked. And that's it. I'll be uh, putting some satin varnish on this a little later. I'm just going to lift up the hat and go in there with a really thin flat brush and pull down because I don't want to take this hat off now. Another thing you can do is you can get a hole saw and drill a hole right here about an inch or an inch and a quarter and drill a hole in. You can empty it out and you can use this for a real scarecrow. You can use this for a real scarecrow by, you know, getting a dowel that fits in the hole and setting it on top and then, you know, do the crossed arms and I would not decorate outside with this. Not even after the polyurethane because it's acrylic and it will uh, rehydrate, get all sticky and it won't look good. So there you have it, Mr. Scarecrow. I'm going to give you some information in the description below the video of a gourd supplier that I'm that I'm currently using and I just love them. So, if you're interested in buying some gourds, just look in the description and it'll give you all the information you need. So, there you have it.